Okay. Welcome everyone and good morning to our presentation on land use planning and cannabis. This project is led by Dr. Sarah Epp and Dr. Wayne Caldwell and both myself and my colleague Samantha are part of the research team and will be presenting today. In our presentation, I'll discuss the government rules and cannabis policy, why we're researching cannabis, and then provide an overview of the project. Samantha will then share some project highlights, trends, challenges, and next steps. So in order to frame the cannabis land use policy in Canada, it's important to understand an overview of who does what. The federal government issues licenses for the production of cannabis, whereas the provincial government regulates the retail distribution. In 2001, medical cannabis was legalized, and in 2018, recreational cannabis was legalized. Municipalities are then responsible for all these pieces in between the sitting of retail and production facilities, nuisance bylaws, even regulating public consumption and oftentimes enforcement. A couple of items to note is that in 2019, municipalities had a one-time option to opt out of having cannabis retail stores in their communities, and municipalities were provided a fair amount of policy guidance on how to navigate this process. However, there was very little resources in terms of policy guidance for the land use planning and cannabis uh, cultivation. Also in 2019, Health Canada required new applicants for cultivation, processing, medical purposes, so that full gamut, to have a fully built site that meets all the requirements of cannabis regulations at the time of their application. So in this sense, applicants move through that municipal process, um, if there's any, then through provincial processes, if there's any of those, and then they make an application to the federal government. Which brings us to, why are we studying cannabis cultivation policy? With the federal legalization of the cannabis sector, cannabis production has expanded significantly across Southern Ontario. And much of this expansion has occurred in the rural countryside, often through using existing greenhouse infrastructure. And while the growth of the sector provides economic, develop, economic benefits to rural communities, Complaints from adjacent residents, mostly related to lighting and odor issues, are common and mitigation of these issues is complex and often challenging. So municipalities in their attempt to navigate this complexity have used various planning measures to regulate even temporarily halting new operations. And the result are bylaws and approaches that lack consistency and may not be fair to producers or their neighboring landowners. And the appropriateness and the impact of these policies has not been tested. This evolving landscape of the regulations, the increasing cannabis production and mitigating the land use conflicts, the gaps in the research, it brings us to the importance and the need for this research project. One of the key objectives is to understand how land use planning can mitigate issues related to odor and lighting. Other objectives include supporting the economic development and continued expansion of the cannabis sector in Ontario, identifying and developing planning tools that address odor and lighting issues, to bring consistency to municipal decision-making and land use planning approvals related to the cannabis production in Ontario. Research is funded by the Ontario Agri-Food Innovation Alliance Program. So thank you very much for your support and the funding. The project is a three-year study. It began in 2020 uh, with a, that literature review and policy scan. Some of the next stages include preparing surveys for municipal staff and producers, developing key studies and conducting interviews. The deliverables of this study are creating a good neighbor policy, a municipal toolkit, and of course the final report. The final year will be focused on education and outreach. And now over to Samantha for some project highlights. <clears throat> Sorry, thank you, Cassandra. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. 
Um, so this past year, the cannabis team has been working on attending Ontario LPAP hearings to gather local information and narrative. We reviewed literature of other countries and states that have legalized recreational cannabis to determine the best practices for our own province. And we have been working on an extensive resource document of all Ontario municipalities' cannabis policies. So this policy scan will soon become an open source database for everyone to view. The goal is to bring cohesiveness among planners across the province through this resource. We are comparing the definitions, the setback range, permitted zones, indoor or outdoor growth production, minimum lot sizes, site plan control, oh wait, sorry, <laughs> site plan control and interim control bylaws, uh, which is a planning tool to halt a certain land use for one to two years. For the summer, the cannabis team will be focusing on a number of different areas, such as case studies, development of surveys, uh, research into farm gate cannabis sales, and a deeper dive into data analysis, uh, which will help to identify any emerging trends. Next slide, please. So based on observations, we have a few general findings. The setback range is rather large. However, the common setback is between 150 meters to 300 meters. 150 meters is typically with air control treatment in place, while 300 meters is without. Uh, we are also finding that newer zoning bylaw amendments are specifying the need for air control treatment due to complaints and to align with Health Canada regulations. And it is for the same reason that most facilities are limited to indoor uh, cannabis production. Another commonality is that most permitted zones for a production facility are in agriculture, uh, rural and industrial zones because it allows for the space and the exclusion from urban areas. There are also areas of interesting regulations. So there is a municipality that requires a setback of 3000 meters from another production facility, which could allude to limiting only a couple of facilities in the region. Um, we have also noticed some municipalities that have an outdoor microgrowth setback of 75 meters from property lines. Currently, we are aware of at least 15 active interim control bylaws that have halted cannabis production facilities in their own respective uh, municipalities. I'd like to also emphasize that there were more interim control bylaws in the past that have simply expired. And now these municipalities have regulations in place. So interim control bylaws can impact the process of opening new production facilities and may further complicate municipal approaches to legalizing recreational cannabis. Okay. So as examples, here are some of our findings. Brent County is an example of the common 150 meters uh, setback with air control and 300 meters with, with, uh, without air control. Um, <clears throat> Haldimand County has a wider and more specific setback range of 150 to 250 meters uh, depending on the facility size. And that is also with uh, air control treatment in place. Um, but commonly in both uh, counties, it, it is permitted in agricultural and industrial zones. So there is a variety of approaches and regulations in place. But um, let's take a look at a more focused area. Um, so in Essex County, there are nine lower tier municipalities, each with differing zoning criteria. So three are without information or are only limited to medical marijuana facilities. Um, the five other locations have differing setbacks ranging from 30 meters to 500 meters of setback. 
but are generally permitted in um, agricultural and industrial zones. So from these examples, it tells us that municipal policies have inconsistent setback requirements, ranging from very detailed guidelines to no policy. Okay, next slide, thank you. Um, for challenges that we came across, we found multiple terms for cannabis. Uh, these four terms are cannabis, um, medicinal, uh, marijuana spelled with a J and marijuana spelled with an H. <laughs> this has slowed data collection, the slowed the data collection process in the initial stages um, due to the different definitions. So we we might not be looking as quickly then. Um, but in the newer zoning bylaws, we are noticing that they are generalizing the four terms into just one term, which is cannabis. From another perspective, municipalities could be waiting for neighboring municipalities or provincial direction to benchmark their regulations. Uh, with the delay in regulations, there are concerns with illegal operations that leave without consequences. All of this leads to an incomplete picture of cannabis regulation in Ontario. So um, interim control bylaw create a policy gap where it can be difficult to track the expiration dates and outcomes. Um, neighboring municipalities delay their own policy creation and can be an opportunity for producers to continue these operations under ambiguous zoning bylaws. For some municipalities, we found um, accessing documents difficult when they were they are not accessible PDF files and or have not been updated publicly for over a decade. <laughs> In terms of data collection though, um, some municipalities have made decisions to include uh, cannabis policy, but it isn't always updated or in consolidated uh, documents. Okay. Great. So although we've had some challenges, we look forward to the next couple of months. The team will be making um, the open source data base accessible to the public. And we are currently working on a survey and we'll be distri distributing that soon. Um, following up, we will be interviewing planners and producers. Okay. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, if there are information or questions that you would like to ask privately, feel free to contact us. Um, we next slide. We have um, all of our contact information just on the side here. Um, and now we're open to questions. <laughs>